Welcome to another top five here at MacGuffinPodcast.com. I am Brandy. And I'm Alan. And today we have a little bit of a Thanksgiving theme going on. Uh, This is the time of year when you gather with your family. And so we are going to have our top five dysfunctional film families. Not saying your family is dysfunctional, but some families are a little bit dysfunctional. So... Uh, you want me to start? Sure. Okay, my number five, like, I'm just gonna go the most dysfunctional you can pretty much get this side of Texas Chainsaw Massacre right out the bat, and that is The Addams Family. (laughs) Uh, And this is a movie that I actually own and really, really like, and I've watched a lot of times, and I maintain that if you say you don't like it, you're a liar, because it is funny, and it's just like, like, it's like a fun family film or whatever, and obviously The Addams are... Pretty much the quintessential uh, Hollywood dysfunctional family as well. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I gotta say that I haven't actually seen this sim in so long. You know, just you mentioning it's it's like, wow, that's right. How can I, I like it. I one? like the sequel too. Sequel is um, good. I, you know, I liked it too. Raul Julia and Angelica Houston are great in mm-hmm. their roles as Morticia and Gomez. Like their chemistry is hilarious. Uh, it's it's considered a quotable movie around my house. So. Okay, cool. All right, let's uh, move on to my number five. My number five is actually an independent film, and it is Pieces of April from 2003, directed by Peter Hedges, who, uh, FYI, I think actually wrote uh, What's in Gilbert Grape, and I think he also directed Mm -hmm. Dan in Real Life. So when you think about dysfunctional families, this is the guy to go to. Um, Stars Katie Holmes uh, in one of her better performances, I think, as this sort of black sheep of a family uh, who's hosting this Thanksgiving dinner. Um, you also have Patricia Clarkson, who was uh, Oscar-nominated uh, for much this literally always film uh, as, this, as the mom who is uh, dying of cancer and mm-hmm. uh, is trying to be with her family, you know, one last time. Uh, you have Oliver Platt, who's this kind of, like, optimistic guy who, you know, thinks everything's going to turn out fine. Um, it's a, you know, it's intimate, it's fun, it's uh, heartfelt. Uh, it's really something worth uh, checking out. So. Okay, yeah, I haven't seen it. Yeah. So yeah. maybe I'll do so this Thanksgiving. All right. All right, uh, my number four, also an indie type film from 2005, and that is Junebug. Uh, this was the film that got Amy Adams on everyone's radar. She was nominated for Best Supporting Actress for it. Um, I think it's a really good movie. The director really hasn't done anything else since Phil Morrison. Um, and I, haven't, I don't think I've ever seen anything else he did before, but, um, you know, the the brother has gone away from his, I think, like, North Carolina or South Carolina, Southern family, um, coming back with a big city wife and uh, not a little bit of culture clash mm-hmm, there mm-hmm. going on. Um, has Benjamin McKenzie in a key role uh, from the OC, and uh, you know, I never liked him, but until this movie, so <laughs> which he's really good yeah. in. Uh, and Amy Adams is fantastic as uh, Benjamin McKenzie's pregnant wife as well. Very wide-eyed, uh, just shocked. There's yeah. a line where she just can't believe that the uh, brother's wife grew up in Japan. Like she cannot. Even. Yeah, if there if there's one yeah. reason to watch this movie, uh, in my opinion, it is Amy Adams. Mm-hmm. She is She's so definitely... good. Uh, I can't believe she didn't win the Oscar for that film. Uh, you guys definitely have to check it out for her performance alone. I think it's yeah. great. So great. Uh, okay, so my number four pick uh, is from 1993, <clears throat> and it is called This Boy's Life, mm. uh, directed by Michael Canton Jones, uh, featuring Robert De Niro, Ellen Barkin, and Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. Um, now, the mom in this movie Ellen Barkin just has such bad luck when it comes to (laughs) meeting men Mm. it seems every person she meets turns out to be like uh, an asshole pretty much Uh, you know the very beginning of the film uh, you know she and her son is are running away from this abusive boyfriend only to run into Robert De Niro who unfortunately is probably even worse uh, as a as as a husband Uh, you know Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, great performance uh, in, early in his career. Um, I mean, it's definitely something to watch. I mean, yeah, and it's it kind of... it is set in Washington State, too, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, it's actually based in Seattle. There you go. Yes. Yeah, so. great. Good movie, and that is a very good book, the book that it's based on as well. 
right. So fine. All right. Um, my number three is a Korean film from 2006, and that is The Host, which is a really great monster movie. Um, and one of the things that makes it so great is this sort of like ragtag family that has to band together to save the daughter from the monster. Um, it's full of endearing characters, and I feel like that's not, um, you know, a lot of times you see in a monster movie kind of thing, like them trying to save a family member or whatever, but like something about this one, it just, it's, it feels so genuine, mm -hmm. but the characters mm -hmm. have the wackiness, you know, like the sister is a champion archer and yeah. stuff like that, and I just, I think it's a really great film, and the director, Bong Joon-ho, has done like a lot of a couple other really prominent Korean films as well. The recently did Mother, which yeah, I think is right. going to be winning some awards. Yeah. Um, anyway, it's a yeah. great film. I, didn't, and I never really thought about it as a family movie. I mean, I remember it just being a monster movie, but now that you mention it, yeah, I guess, yeah, it is actually a pretty, pretty strong family movie also. Um, yeah, so if you guys like family movies and monster movies, the host together. is where it's at. Yeah. Uh, my number three pick uh, is kind of from uh from francis ford coppola it is the corleone family from the godfather trilogy <laughs> i didn't even think of this one but that's a great pick. let's let's go down the line of yeah. uh, the reasons why this is a uh, dysfunctional family you have a straight-laced kid who becomes the head of a mafia family mm. he has an older hot-headed brother who gets gunned down for beating up his sister's husband uh you have another brother who's kind of simple-minded but accidentally tries to have his own himself killed um you have a sister who in the beginning of the story is sweet and innocent and then by the third film turns out to be an assassin <laughs> and you have a nephew who tries to get with your daughter so if that I mean, is I not the definition of actually like gunning each other down you <laughs> surpassed dysfunctional yeah exactly like yeah. non-functional <laughs> yeah non-functional is probably a better term for it so yeah there you go corleone family <laughs> yeah always good to revisit that happy bunch yeah so. yeah that's a family you want to get yeah. to for the holidays okay. um my number two is a film that you actually mentioned earlier and that is what's eating gilbert great oh. which i haven't seen in a really long time but i used to watch it a lot i was a really big fan of this movie um, you know, great performances from Johnny Depp, Leonardo DiCaprio, Juliette mm -hmm. Lewis, you know, um, and a, a very odd little family going mm -hmm. on there with a lot of issues with mom's obesity and mm -hmm. the son's uh, disability yeah. and the sister's rebelliousness and, you know, Gilbert just, just trying to hold it all together. Right. Um, I think it's... You know, it's just, it's a really good movie, you know? Yeah, um, I have to admit that I haven't seen this one all the way through. I have seen bits and parts of it. Although it is kind of interesting to think that, you know, Johnny Depp, who is known to play these really eccentric characters, mm -hmm. is pretty much the lone straight guy. Yeah, and his true. entire family is like, you know, crazy, like, you know, crazy, you know, family members. It's kind of interesting yeah. to think about. And yeah. it is one of my favorite performances of his. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh, moving on to my number two. Uh, my number two film is from 2001, and it's directed by Wes Anderson, and it is The Royal Tenenbaums. Mm -hmm. um, now, I have to admit that uh, this isn't my favorite uh, Wes Anderson, but when you think of dysfunctional families, yeah. I think this one is definitely, you know, there to talk about. Um, features uh, Gene Hackman as a uh, royal Tenenbaum, who's, you know, the patriarch of this family that he ran away from a long time ago, and he's now just coming back trying to, you know, make amends. Uh, he has, you know, three uh, children who are all prodigies, and they all grew up to you know, resent him and <laughs> everything like that. It's really quirky, uh, you know, actually kind of dark in some parts too, but mm -hmm. also very, very, uh, I, I mean, funny. I don't know if funny is really the word, but there's so a lot droll. of like, yeah. <laughs> parts, yeah. Yeah, so very humorous. So yeah, definitely. Up yeah, there, I so. love that movie. So um, yeah, good pick. Thank you. All right, my number one uh, is another sort of indie film. It's from 1995, director Todd Solons, and that is Welcome to the Dollhouse, which uh, is a very dark and weird movie um, that I once took someone to see on a first date. <laughs> oh, yeah, date, so, dark. you know, mm, okay. uh, that, I guess I just really want people to know what they're in for right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. 
<laughs> right. Anyway, uh, I love this movie. Um, Heather Moderato as Don Wiener, um, the most awkward child that has ever lived, and her crazy parents, her geeky ass of a brother, her little sister who's gonna tutu all the time and then disappears. Uh, might might have been kidnapped, might not have been kidnapped. Um, it, you know, Todd Solons is a weird dude and he makes weird movies but this one is... Interesting. I, I really love it. I really love it a lot. Very cool. I, I haven't seen this one but uh, it's definitely piqued my interest. Uh, <laughs> If you out there ever think about wanting to date Brandy, watch this movie. <laughs> this is kind of uh, stuff that you're going to have to see. Yeah, through. you'll know what you're getting yeah. into. So, uh, <laughs> all right. Let's move on to my number one pick. Uh, my number one dysfunctional family uh, is from a film uh, that was directed by Sam Mendes. It's from 1999, and it is American Beauty. Mm. Um, it's interesting to think of, you know, this group of people as a family because they really do not get along with each other. Mm -hmm. They Each person kind of lives in their own world and they have their own issues and their own kind of, you know, storylines to go through. I, I mean, every time they get together, you know, at the dinner table, it's always really, really awkward. Um, you know, you have Kevin Spacey, uh, who has this hole in himself and he's trying to fill it. You have Annette Benning who is trying to you know, be in a success uh, selling houses. Uh, you have Thor Birch, who has who plays the daughter. Where that has she the, been? Uh, she was She's just so in good. 127 hours, wasn't she? No. 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 Okay. Oh. So, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Way off. Anyway. Uh, yeah, I totally lost my spot now. Uh, but it is a great movie, great performances. Uh, definitely, you know, the quintessential uh, dysfunctional family to me. So. Yeah, that's a very specific kind of suburban American dysfunction that we're talking about in that film. Yeah, so yep. happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> and that has been another Top 5. We will see you next time. Take care.